Hi. Welcome back to my channel. Continuing from my previous video about the 4.26 inch Waveshare e-paper display. In this video, I'll show you how to use an e-paper display as a label that can change its text using RFID tags dynamically. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. I'm using a 4.26 inch e-paper display from Waveshare. In my opinion, its size is ideal for use as a label in stores or on racks. It's not too small, so it can display several pieces of important information. The first step is to design the template. In this code, I will create a rectangular border on all sides of the display using the display.fillrect command. The values inside the parentheses represent the X position, Y position, rectangle width, height, and fill color. This display has a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels, which serves as a reference for determining the X and Y positions. And here's the result. We've successfully created a black border on each side of the display using the fill rectangle command. Next, we'll create black horizontal and vertical lines to divide the display into sections, which will later be filled with information. This step helps organize the layout and makes the displayed content easier to read. Here's the result. We've successfully created horizontal and vertical black lines, forming several sections where we can add information. Next, we'll add text as headers for each section, address, store name, part name, part no, and total Kanban. When displaying text, make sure to adjust it to the appropriate font size for better readability. Here's the display. We've successfully created headers for each section. The text for the headers is set in a smaller font compared to the information that will be displayed in those sections. This helps distinguish the headers from the actual content. The next step is to place the information text for each section. I will first create black boxes for each section. These boxes will serve as reference positions for the information text, and the text will be centered within the boxes for a neat and organized look. And here's the result. You can see the black boxes in each section. These boxes will serve as references for positioning the information text in each section, ensuring everything looks neat and organized. Next, based on the boxes we've created, I'll write a function to display the information in each box using the partial window method. The function will use the X and Y positions, width, and height values that match the size and location of each box. In short, this code defines a function to display information such as part name, part number, and total Kanban using the partial window update method. The window area is set based on the box references we created earlier. I store the values for part name, part number, and others in variables, so when the values are retrieved from the server, they are immediately displayed on the e-paper display. For the code used in this video, I will share the download link in the video description. You can download it directly from there and use it in your projects. If you have any questions or need further clarification on how the code works, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll be happy to help. Here's the display when all the information is shown on the e-paper. It includes the address section, which holds the store address information, followed by the store name, which in this case is after plating, indicating this is for the after plating process store. You'll also see the part name, part number, and total Kanban, which will change when an RFID scan is performed. To store the relationship between each unique RFID tag UID and its corresponding part name and part number, I save this information in a database. When the ESP32 scans an RFID tag, it reads the UID and sends it to MQTT. Then, it queries the database to find the corresponding part name and part number associated with the scanned UID. Here's the node red flow. When the ESP32 sends the UID after scanning the RFID, node red will read the UID and search for the corresponding data in the table. If the data is found, node red will send back the part name and part number to the ESP32 based on the received D. 
the ESP32 will then update and display the part name and part number on the e-paper display. And here's the result. When the RFID tag is scanned by the RFID reader, you can see the e-paper display update its information according to the scanned RFID tag. The displayed information, such as the part name and part number, will change accordingly. In conclusion, this video demonstrates how to create a dynamic labeling system using an e-paper display and RFID tags. By scanning the RFID tag, we can instantly update the displayed information, such as the part name and part number, without any manual intervention. This system is perfect for use in stores or on racks, where frequent label changes are required. Unlike traditional paper labels that need to be printed, laminated, and replaced, this solution allows for quick and efficient updates, saving both time and resources. With this dynamic label system, you can easily manage and change your labels on the fly, making it a more sustainable and cost-effective solution in environments that require frequent updates. Whether it's inventory management or production tracking, this method makes label management much easier and more efficient. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.